Now we go to the marker. The marker actually puts a it's a uh, a song marker on your uh, on the beginning of your song, and it, it's it's for recording uh, CDs off of this uh, with multiple song recording uh, on this, which uh, I haven't done yet, and, but we could explore later in another video. But I I usually don't put it on. Um, because I haven't really used it, I usually record onto my audio CD burner one song at a time. Uh, but we could explore that later in another video. Uh, and the markers can have to be f at least four seconds apart. Uh, CDR record mode, I haven't really used that much because it just puts a image a uh, CD image onto the song so that it can be burnt onto a CD quickly. Uh, I have to read up more about that, but oh, uh, the after record. So this, uh, if you wanted a uh, a pause before the song, uh, you could uh, put set that to something else other than zero. But what that does is after the song is done, recorded on these two tracks here, it moves the recording back to zero, even though I'll start the song actually after the uh, clicks uh, in about 5-1, five, 5-1, one. Five, one, measure 5, beat 1. Okay, using the effects uh, is pretty easy. You can go down here and use that down to move around use this over to move over and then the yes light will be uh, flashing you press that and now you can turn on and off any of the effects there's four effects and for this other uh, effects four I have a nylon string setting for one of my guitars. Now if I put that setting on it's gonna um, be for the, the whole the, the two tracks for all the all the things all the drums everything will have uh, th that effect on it and you just do it with this this wheel and you turn it on or off. Uh, I don't want that effect on my entire set so I do not use that right now. So what I do is I hit the exit exit button right here. Then I go back to the mastering room by hitting that uh, mastering button and then this mastering button and I leave them off. So now we're basically ready to go got everything set. Uh, 15, 16. Now let's turn up the volume to 0 dB for uh, track 17 and 18. Make sure before you do your master recording to turn off any auto punching or loops so that uh, you don't uh, record a loop or if you want to record a loop you could but uh, and you don't record just a certain amount that's what the auto punch is for which is going to be in actually video two and this is video three <laughs> okay now we're ready to go uh, this is a long song about five minutes and something so I'm going to start it and then I'm going to cut to the end uh, and then we'll look at the end of the recording notice we are starting right here off of zero we're starting at at five one instead of one one which would be right here press record and let's do it <laughs>
Leave four seconds after the song. One, two, three, four. Stop. Hit the stop button. Stop. My uh, screen still is fading a little bit. It's an old machine. Just hit the contrast or just turn the contrast till it comes in a bit darker. There you go. Now we're done. Except for now we go up here. Hitting these buttons, of course. Go up to. Oh, not that one. Up to record. And switch it over to play by pushing it to the rolling the wheel to the right. That puts it to play. Now notice that we're back at zero. Or one one. And that's because we set this to, after recording, go to zero. Because we started after the clicks, which are um, one through four. Now, with it on play, it just plays back. So it turns off all these one through sixteen. And only leaves... 17 and 18 on and you really don't even need oh yeah and now you want to turn off your auto mix when you're playing back uh, and so you don't even really need this one up you just need to master up and these don't matter no, these don't matter because they're all off only these two master tracks are on and you're ready to play back Thank mm -hmm. you.